Welcome to Toffee TV. Today I am joined by actor, writer, director, Sam Hoare. But most important thing, Evertonian. Uh, Sam, welcome to Toffee TV. Thank you very much. Really pleased to be here. Big fan. So, top man, top man. We are big fans of yours as well. Top man. Ped's loving the fact you were in Captain America. So there you go. Uh, there you go. I'm, I'm loving the fact you've been in Death in Paradise. I mean... Yeah. Outstanding. I mean, I was the cook. Outstanding. So I didn't do a lot. But that's okay. Sort of, yeah. It's, 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 look, it's hard. I had to spend a whole day lying on the grass being eaten by ants in Guadeloupe. I've had, I've had easier days work, for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And how long were you in Guadeloupe for? How long were you out there for to uh, do it? I think I was there for about 10 days. Yeah, definitely the nicest place that I've, I've been able to go and film. Not a, not a terrible chore, that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I guess it wasn't, I guess it wasn't. Uh, listen, there's a lot of buzz around at the moment about the English game, which is available on Netflix. I, uh, I'm i loving it. I'm up to episode four. I haven't finished episode four yet, but um, that's so far... That's my episode. That's my episode. That's, that's you. Cool. It's, this yeah. is your one. This is your one. And it's, uh, But I'm, I'm three quarters of the way through, but it's, listen, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. I'm loving it loving the whole thing but how did that come about Sam how did the idea come about well it was it was strange because I mean so the show is is the sort of um you know, I suppose of, of, of Julian Fellows you know who's who's famous for for mm. writing Downton Abbey and then various other things Gosford Park um and yeah. he has had the idea with a sort of friend of his for a long time and was 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 happening and i had i had acted in a, in a in a show for the production company who was who were making it and when i heard that that this show about the sort of history of football was potentially going to happen i said look you've got to give me you've got to give me a piece of that like i'm either either, <laughs> either or, or even uh, let me write some because i mean as happens i had had a similar idea myself about exactly the same period development in tv you know 10 years ago with another company and that never happened but when i heard about the english game i was like look i know a bit of the history i'm a massive football fan you know whatever it takes i just loved you know even even if i have to come in for one day and be a sort of background artist sort of you know cheering in the in the, in the stands i just i would love a bit of it and then, as it happened, up getting an audition for it, and also a uh, production team said, "Look, you know, we do need someone to write episode four. Fancy coming in and pitching for it." I didn't get the acting part, but I did get the writing gig. Okay. Yeah, which was great. Which was fantastic. Which is better? Would you rather have acted in it or written this episode? I mean. It would have been a lot of fun getting paid to go and play football in the 1880s. I would have enjoyed that. Yeah. But and for me, um, career-wise, I've you know I've acted in a lot of period dramas, um, which are always great fun. This was my first ever TV writing credit. Um, so okay. yeah, if I had to have picked, I would have picked the writing gig because it was a step forward for me. Outstanding, outstanding. I mean, it is. It's a brilliant. It's a brilliant show. I mean, was it? Was it your idea to get Everton mentioned in it? <laughs> Everton were mentioned in an of course, episode. Of course it was. Of course it was. I was like, one way or another, I'm going to get Everton into it. I, uh, I I try and get Everton into all of my pieces, actually. I had a, I had a play on in London uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, one of the characters being an Everton fan talking about Ross Barkley. And, I, and I, when I went to go and watch it one night, I just, uh, I just saw a guy in front of me say, turn to his girlfriend and say, the writer must be an Everton fan. <laughs> <laughs> then your work was done. Yeah. Your work was done at that moment. I always, outstanding, always outstanding. I always try and get the toffees in there somewhere if I can. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, what, what have you made of um, Fergus Suter basically being Leighton Baines with a moustache? Do you know what? <laughs> it, was, it was bizarre because I, you know, I met Kevin Guffrey, who's the actor playing Fergus and uh, you know quite a few times and actually I've played football with him myself uh, and yeah. I was there when they were shooting and it never occurred to me and then it came out and the pictures started going around and someone obviously said you know it's Leighton Baines and I was like it really is 
I mean, it's uncanny. It looks exactly <laughs> like him. Um, yeah, it, I can't really believe I hadn't seen it before. But uh, there's a yeah, there's a real and actually, the act both Fergus Uter and the actor himself, Kevin Guffrey, there's a real sort of Bainesy quality to him. Just you know, very chill, very sort of low key, like really good quality man. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's bizarre. <laughs> It was just, it's one of them things that once it's said to you, you can't unsee it. So yeah. I'd seen it, I'd seen it before I'd even started watching it. So it might have even been Ped actually who'd said to me, Leighton Baines is in this. <laughs> and so once he put it in my head, I can only see Baines now with a Scottish accent, you know, outstanding. <laughs> but uh, but absolutely, I mean, I think that's how Baines he would have played that anyway. He'd have, he'd have been brilliant in that role, and maybe that's something he'll do when he uh, when football finally uh, finishes. There's, you know, there's there's always been talk about Bainesy playing in the middle, and uh, I've <laughs> I've always been an advocate for that. I always think he could do quite a good job of dictating the the game, and you know, sort of distributing it to either wing from the middle. Um, I think he'd be great. So yeah, I think Fergus Suter could be a sign of, of things to come for Leighton. Without a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I, we've moved on to Everton, obviously, with it. But for anyone, make sure you catch the English game because it is absolutely brilliant, historical, um, just fantastic. And Everton mentioned in it, you can't beat that. Um, Sam, moving <laughs> on to your your life as an Evertonian, I guess. Um, seeing you, you attended Eton as a boy, we, you must have been the only Evertonian at Eton. <laughs> I think I was. I think I was. I didn't. I didn't meet a lot of Everton fans. At Eton, to be true, mm. it's it was a, a you know it was Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United. Yeah, I was in a, a sort of support of one. Um, and a lot mm. of people, you know, when they me and I say I'm into football, and they say who do you support, and I say Everton, and they sort of go Everton, you know, because I'm 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 posh. I'm a bit of a posh git, and yeah. I don't really I don't really. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a strong uh, Liverpool accent, and I and I probably wouldn't be no. uh, picked out of the crowd as being an obvious Everton fan. But um, my uh, my mum, uh, if you want the history of it, my mum married uh, yeah, yeah. An, uh, a, an Everton fan, basically. Um, so when I well was done, about Mom. ten years exactly when I was about ten years old, and I was sort of beginning to get into football, and, and I think probably the first game of football I ever watched on uh, on the TV with my stepdad was. Um, was a 95 cup final um so that was that was uh that was the beginning and it's it's been downhill mm. since <laughs> i was i was gonna say you were you were sold the false dream there really weren't you yeah. if that was your first one and we won the fa cup um and followed it up with a charity shield a couple of months later you probably thought oh this is all right we, we win quite a lot of stuff and yeah glory supporting has now gone... since then no <laughs> <laughs> no, it went spectacularly wrong. That glory, glory support went very, very wrong there. Yeah. I have to say that without without a shadow of a doubt. Um, so how have you? I mean, how have you? How do you get to Goodison often, or is it is it very much with your work? It, it's watching from afar. I I have not been to Goodison enough. I made my first trip there last year. Uh, my first sort of pilgrimage to Goodison to go and watch the derby, last, which actually ended up being a cracking match. Uh, and I went up with a couple of uh, Everton fans uh, from London, actors who I knew, and it was oh, like a dream, honestly. You know, I've, I've, I've yeah. been watching them on the TV, and I've watched them when they come down to London loads. Never been to good as an. I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Everton fan. You know, I write a lot on mm. on Everton fan sites, and um, it, it felt strange that I'd never been there. So when I finally turned up uh, to Liverpool and to Goodison for the first time. It was, uh, you know, I felt like a kid going to a theme park, to be honest. It was it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose, I mean, listen, when you've, you've seen it that often and then you actually go, it, it, it is quite a, quite a sight to behold, I guess. Um, what have you made of, you know, we touched on the fact that we haven't been great for a number of years and, and obviously we're trying to, we're trying to, climb back up what did you make of the appointment to Carlo Ancelotti do you know what I initially I was skeptical um my brother is a big Arsenal fan he's a season ticket holder he was sort yeah. of saying oh you know I quite fancy Ancelotti and I was saying well I quite fancy Arteta to be honest um I think <laughs> I always 
I've always been prone to sort of wanting those sort of younger or modern sort of hands-on mm. managers. Um, so Arteta would probably have been my pick out of those two. I think I was worried, you know, that, that Carlo's been around for a long time. He's had a lot of jobs and that, you know, maybe this was just another job to, to sort of fill his pockets. But, um, but I've been really pleasantly surprised. And it, it seems that mm. he's really taken to the club. And I think, as I see it, he seems to have a real, you know, to, to do something that he's not done for a long time, which is to take a team that, you know, is not where and is, you know, rather stuck in mid table and to build a real project. Uh, and he's not had the chance to do that for a long time. And it seems to me like he's really up for it. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, you know, the, the more I saw them, the more excited I got up until be that last mm. Chelsea match, which we'll forget about. But um, yeah. <laughs> we'll write that one off. Let's not talk about... I think maybe we must have had some talk corona about going around or something. Something was going on, wasn't it? Something yeah. went on. Now, I, you know what? You know what, Sam? I, I was... Um, I, I'm not convinced Carlo would have been my, was my number one at the time for those reasons as well. I was looking and thinking... It, not that was he just coming for a payday, but what did he have enough energy to, mm. to you know, try to re... You know, make re research, give us a resurgence. Arteta was one who you looked at and was young and hungry, and you know, potentially, yeah, he would, you know, and he's an ex Everton player, obviously, so all of that. And, and Carlo Ancelotti was a bit like, you know, he's won everything, you can't deny his track record, of course, but was he, did he still maintain that hunger and desire, especially when you see what's gone on across the park for us? You yeah. know, um, we needed someone like that, and I've been. Ever since he came in, obviously Duncan gave us a, a big kick when we needed it and woke us up again. But you know, with a bit of uh, a bit of Scottish aggression, which is what we need, a bit of Fergus Suter, um, Jimmy Love aggression that we needed. And Carlo took that on, and and I've, like you, I, I'm I'm absolutely loving the the fact that he's so calm, and yet he's done everything. And you're right, he, he's almost gone back to this is a, a fella that was was born into a. A poor Italian family and had to work for everything. So that humbleness and that desire to work has mm. never left them. And I think I didn't probably respect that enough about him because you see Real Madrid and you see Juventus and you see AC Milan and Chelsea and you think, oh, he's you know he's at those big clubs, the glamorous clubs. But this is actually talking back to his working class roots almost. And I think that makes him a great fit for Everton at the moment. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think it, it's it's hard to predict, you know, certainly for, for us fans. I mean, I guess, you know, Martel Brands and, and you know, the other people inside of the club must have must have had the opportunity to see his passion and to, and to believe that he was a good fit. But for us fans, you know, it's hard to know that that's going to be there until you see him on the sidelines. Mm. But, I mean, exactly, as, as you said, I, I feel like hopefully we've got the best of both worlds where we've got who is one you know everything under the sun he's he's managed in in leagues he's he's won all the competitions he's got fantastic sort of mm. tactical pedigree and we've got someone who seems to have that genuine hunger that genuine passion for the club mm. who sort of feels at home who sort of seems to understand that sort of you know that that Everton DNA so yeah i mean it feels at the moment like a great fit exactly um fingers crossed. fingers crossed Fingers crossed. Going back to the English game, is there any any plans for the second series, focusing on maybe different people in it now? What goes on there, or, or have you not heard of anything at the moment? Is it a case of wait and see? I th I think I mean I know that the production company were who made it were minded to that. Um, uh, mm. It will depend ultimately on Netflix. I think it's it's as far as I know, it's done pretty well. It's been in the sort of top five for the Netflix charts for the last couple of weeks and I think it's really? seems to be getting sort of viewed over the world um you know I would love there to be a second series uh, if there is I don't even know whether I would get to be involved you know I would love there to be a second series just to watch if there was a second series mm -hmm. that I could be involved in that would be even better um and I think you know people love football people love football and there are so many fantastic 
true stories about the history of football. Uh, I've had a lot of people get in contact with me and saying, you know, why haven't you talked more about, you know, the Scottish players taking it to South America? Or why haven't you talked about, you know, the role that Sheffield played in the origins of football? Or why haven't you talked about, you know, and they're all right. You know, like we, the English mm -hmm. game does, uh, did have to take, uh, you know, some sort of historical uh, jumps as every sort of historical drama does in order to sort of keep your world condensed. But there are a lot of stories out there, you know. I was I was talking to someone about, you know, maybe uh, a, a story about Dixie, you know. I think uh, I was just going to say, yeah, that story. That and you could, I could see you with your hair slicked back, Sam. <laughs> I could see you with the hair slicked back, pulling off a young, being like Dixie there. I could see. You. I'd have to see I'm not start. bad in the air. I have to tell you, I'm not bad in the air. I, there I you fancy go. myself to, to score a few headers, although I'm more of a centre back. <laughs> Sadly, um. <laughs> <laughs> but that no, but see it seriously. Something like a Netflix series about him it is because his life is incredible. There's also the 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 English sailors that went off and um, Evertonians that went off and started Barcelona, which is why they've got the the English flag on their badge and stuff. So there is like you're right, it's un unbelievable stories around that haven't been told yet. You seem the man to do it. Well, I mean, like I said, it's not, it's <laughs> uh, it's very kind of you. It's not it's not my show. I'm mm. just a small cog in it. But look, the, the, you know, the guy, yeah. one, one of the main producers, when I met him, he was talking about how if it goes well, you know, there's the potential to to chart the history of football. You know, to 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 mm. run, you know, the beginning of the league, football being spread to you know Europe, being spread to South America. You know, women's football, yeah. the first black footballers, the beginning of European football, the beginning of the Champions League. You know, you've 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 got so much mileage potentially. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's in the lap of the gods, I suppose. Well, hopefully, people will continue to watch it because it's brilliant, and then they will get the second series. And then maybe, if you're not asked to write it, maybe you need to audition again and just say, "Look, you missed the trick in the first one. Get me in this one." <laughs> And then see what happens from there. You never know. You never know. Sounds have you got anything me. person? <laughs> well, exactly. Uh, have you got anything personally coming up, Sam? Any any acting? Are you doing a bit more writing, or or is it just very much a case to see what happens next? Well, yeah, I was I was acting in a in a play in the West End um, up until a couple of weeks ago, uh, and that was due to run to June. It was a fantastic play called Leopoldstadt um, by Tom Stoppard. Right. Um, which had been going fantastically and it was sort of sold out. Um, and obviously that's had to shut down now. So we're all hoping that, you know, when things go back to normal, that might start up again. If it doesn't, okay. then it will be yeah, back to the drawing board as an actor, you know, auditioning and seeing what happens. And I've got loads of writing projects. I'm, I'm you know, I've got some TV shows in development. I've got a couple of films in development. So... I need something to, uh, to get me away from my kid for, for one morning or afternoon a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see how long this lockdown lasts and see what you look like at the yeah. end of it, like all of us, I guess. I Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, well, listen, Sam, it's been absolutely brilliant chatting to you today and uh, thank you very much for taking time out from A, your busy life and B, from looking after your child, who I know is... Amanda, just very quickly, you were just telling me before we started about getting an Everton shirt on your child for the first time, and uh, yeah, has he took to it? He taken well, to it? So, so my daughter, I, my daughter who's older, I bought her an Everton shirt, mm. and for a year, you know, she was like Everton. She would come to the pub with me, but my daughter, it turns out, is a big wind-up merchant, and my brother, who, who's the Arsenal season ticket holder, had a word with her and has somehow convinced her. To, to pretend that she supports Arsenal. So now every time I try and put the Everton shirt on, it's chanting Arsenal, Arsenal. So she's out. <laughs> and the, my three-year-old boy, <laughs> he's the next great hope. He's now in possession of the shirt. And I'm hoping to keep him at lockdown as not any, you know, undue influence perverting him no. from, from away from Everton. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Keep, keep him on the straight and narrow. Can't be yeah. losing, losing yeah. him to Arsenal. No, none of that. <laughs> None of that. Well, Sam, like I said, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. And hopefully we'll get to chat to you again uh, in the future. Yeah. So good Anytime. luck with everything. Anytime.
So there you go. Lovely to chat to Sam Horde. Make sure you catch the English game on Netflix. It's absolutely brilliant. And um, and support an Evertonian writer. Why not? Absolutely brilliant. Check it out. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you want more great videos, join us on Patreon. See you later.